Hello YouTube. In this video we're going to take a look, another, another look really, at uh, the Compact Disk Pro XE466 that you can see right here. I've got this massive stack of floppies here because we're probably going to need them. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to install Windows 3.1 and uh, MS-DOS 6.22 on this machine to restore it to its uh, glory and to its uh, appropriate software when it would have come out of the factory in 1993 or 1994. Again, this is a uh, February of 1994 model, and uh, well, let's get started by booting into the first DOS setup disk. I finally tracked down a Dutch version of MS-DOS so I can uh, restore it to the glory that I want it to be in. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. Go. That should be pretty good. All right. We need to go back first because we need to format the hard drive that is now currently you know, holding Windows 95. If I'm not mistaken, there is in fact a partition on here. This disk is partitioned into two partitions. The first one is uh, Windows 95, and the second partition is for games and software. Um, I'm not going to be installing Windows from a uh, floppy disk. I'm going to be using this CD-ROM. It's got Windows 3.11 for workgroups on it, because um, that's the only version I could find that was in Dutch as well. Um, it also has Office 4.3 and a couple of games as well. I know there are plenty of games still on the hard drive, on the D drive, but uh, we're not going to mess with those too much. We're just going to be setting up uh, MS-DOS, then installing the CD-ROM driver, and then we're going to reboot, uh, and then use the CD-ROM to install Windows. So I'm just going to let this sit in format, and uh, we'll continue as soon as the MS-DOS setup uh, starts up. All right. We get to zoom back up. There we go. Um, let's start DOS now. So you can start installing the operating system. There we go. Yeah, that's more OCD proof for me. Anyways, let's go into the setup. Apparently it is now 1980, well the CMOS battery is hopelessly dead. I'm just going to assume that it knows what this is like. It's... Mm, okay, this is regular notation, so this would be the... I think it's the 25th of March. 250317. God damn it. One, seven. There we go. Time doesn't matter. That's all correct. I'm in the Netherlands and the keyboard is United States International. And now we can start installing MS-DOS. Oh, it is actually really cringeworthy. Oh, well. We'll have to make it work this way. There we go. By the way, uh, while you're watching this, I would actually like to know what do you think of this uh, camera and audio quality that I'm using right now? Because I switched from my iPhone 6 because it was being quite cumbersome to record from that. And I switched to a dedicated camera. I will not uh, go into too much detail on what it is, but um, the problem with the iPhone 6 was basically that it has pretty limited storage. I only have a 16 gigabyte phone and um, with everything installed, all my apps and some music and stuff like that, I have about three gigabytes free and that's pretty much mm, enough for what, what I want to do with it. But to record longer videos, I pretty much have to take the video off if I want to make a longer video. It's like 10 minutes of recording and then I have to be conscious of my uh, limited space and then just take the video off as a preventative measure and then just uh, 
record from there again and now I can just keep recording because I have a 64 gig SD card in this camera. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna see if the bang for the buck was worth it and if not I'll just end up selling the camera probably. Um, anywho, I'm just gonna install DOS right now and uh, as soon as this is done uh, we'll get back to it and uh, start up from our very first fresh installation of MS-DOS on the channel. So let's do that. Yee. And if that didn't kill your ears, it surely did kill mine. I'll be back in a jiffy. Alright, we're ready for our first boot into MS-DOS 6.2. Note this is not 6.22, this is actually DOS 6.2. I couldn't find 6.22 in, uh, in Dutch, so I figured 6.2 would do. As far as I know, you need at least MS-DOS 5 to run uh, Windows 3.1, so... It should be good. Oh yeah, I'm in right there. And now, I just need to put in a floppy disk. Because... If I'm not mistaken, I put a utility on here to install the CD-ROM. I'm just not sure if it's a self-extracting archive or not. I haven't actually done any research for that. Ah, yes. Okay. Unzip now. Um, no. I'm going to need to copy this first. We're just going to make a CD-ROM folder on the C drive. Copy it from the A drive to the C drive. There we go. Uh, is it now? Yes, please. Go to the setup. CD-ROM device driver setup. Oh, let's go express setup, sure. Alright, we should be good to go now in terms of the CD-ROM drive installation. I had some issues with that, but uh, they've been resolved. <laughs> Turned out that my Oak CD-ROM driver was corrupted that I copied over, so that floppy disk is now in the bin. So, yeah. Stuff like that happens sometimes on this channel. It's just old hardware degrades, and there's nothing you can do about it. There we go, let's put in the disk. I named the drive CPQ CD for compact, compact disk, which is funny. Anyway, let's go to the E drive, do a directory listing. Let's see if it actually accesses the drive. Yep. Okay, there we go. Now we can see the Windows folder. And let's run setup. Alright. Welcome to Windows for Regroup 3.11 setup. Let's do full setup. We've got plenty of memory and uh, hard drive space for this. So. It's a 3 gigabyte hard drive, we've got 16 megabytes of RAM, that should be enough for this. I, do, I mean, to run Windows 3.11, at least somewhat comfortably, you need about 8 megabytes of RAM. If you've got like 4, you should just stick to Windows 3.0 or just plain DOS, which would actually be what I would do with 4 megs of RAM. Just run DOS, honestly. But uh, I've got some very fond memories of Windows 3.x uh, from the past. When I was in kindergarten we had uh, we had Tulip computers, we had computers from a brand called Laser and they were all running Windows 3.x. Well, we had a few computers out of Windows 95. Um, Windows 98 was just wasn't even out yet when I started in kindergarten because we're talking about well it's early 1998 pretty much. We have no product key because it's not necessary. Pirating has never been so easy, people. Uh, just to get back to the story here. So when I was in kindergarten, we had these computers. I don't even know the specifications because, quite frankly, I was four years old. So you don't really know much about stuff like that yet at that age. wasn't interested in it that much either. That came much later. But uh, 
it was fun. We had these uh, little games that we could play on it. I was just sat at a computer all the time. I mean, I was just really into uh, playing the games of the time. I mean, at home we had a, a compact all-in-one computer with some kind of presario with uh, the screen built in. Um, it was a Pentium class machine. I just, I've never been able to find the exact model that we had. Um, let alone actually getting one, getting a hold of one uh, in this day and age. I would love to do that. I would definitely uh, want some of those machines, or one of those machines at least, um, in the future. So if I ever find one, I will definitely pick it up if it's a good price. I also definitely need a CRT monitor, but I know my girlfriend has a spare one that we can use as soon as uh, we decide to move house and move in together. Which might take a little while still, but nothing more than about a year, maybe two at max, so, you know, never say never. And uh, then this machine will actually have a proper monitor to accompany it, instead of this beige uh, Iyama monitor. I just picked it up basically, well at least picked it up for this video, just because it would fit uh, the, uh, the color scheme that's going on here, I mean, as you can tell. That's all nice and yellowed and beige and stuff like that. And you know, I've got a beige keyboard and a, a silver MacBook Pro. No, that's that does that totally doesn't fit. But I honestly couldn't care less. But yeah, as far as this camera goes, I'm pretty happy so far. It's uh, doing a good job of recording this. And uh, this way I can just talk through the entire installation of Windows, because uh, it's going pretty quickly, because we're using a CD-ROM. This entire stack of floppies, by the way, I'm just going to point the camera down a little bit. This entire stack right here is pretty much uh, part of the floppy mass that I used to install Windows 95 in this machine when I didn't have the CD-ROM driver connected yet. The CD-ROM drive connected, because I couldn't. No printer, thank you. Let's see. No network support, please. There is some kind of Novell NE2000 compatible card in here. It actually has Novell branding on it. But it will not connect to the network whatsoever. And I've pretty much given up on uh, getting that working. So I'm just not going to bother anymore. Ah, uh, sure. Sure. All right, we're almost ready. And uh, my camera camera's battery is about to die, so I'm going to uh, cut and uh, give it a charge a little bit. And uh, I'll be back in a bit. All right. Well, I let the camera charge up a bit. I uh, set up Windows, installed the drivers, so we're just ready to uh, take a look and see if everything works. I haven't been able to set up uh, Office yet. And there is a problem with a 32-bit disk driver, which is... I'll have to fix that, but I don't care. There we go, compact wallpaper and everything. Alright. So we've got the creative mixer, so we can adjust all kinds of volume stuff for the uh, sound card. Of course, this machine has a sound blast with Viber 16. Let's take a look around. We've got our display settings. I've, to, I've defined this screen to go up to 1024 768. There's no point in making it go any higher. It can go up to 1280 by 1024 or 256 colors, but I have no interest. Okay, it doesn't give me an error for that, so I guess we have sound. Yep, we do. Very nice. Windows exit has no sound. Okay. We'll set ta-da to the, uh, don't we have that one? No, we don't have ta-da. Damn. Well, in that case, we'll just set chimes as the log-off sound, and I'll add uh, ta-da to uh, this system.
no problems there. Let's see, what else can we do? All kinds of things. Let's go to the uh, Compaq Utilities. This is the Compaq BIOS Setup Utility. If you go into the BIOS, you get the same interface. So we can see some specifications. So there's a primary disk, which is 3.2 gigs. It's currently running Compaq Business Audio, but I don't have the uh, driver for that installed because we're running a separate card for that. And the video driver and the CPU and everything. 66 MHz, 8486 DX2 with 16 MB of RAM. We also get a power management utility, which I uh, installed. So we can put in some energy saving settings. And security to get a password on PowerOn. So if we reset the computer, we have to fill in a password. Which is pretty cool. For the time at least. And we have the Compact Control Center. Where we can do all kinds of fun stuff. As well as a checkup to see if we have equipment problems with some hardware. Well, let's just quit this. And the Welcome Center, where we can learn everything we need to about this computer. Oh yeah. You know, it's actually pretty fun to have original software like that running. So, in that regard, everything seems to work fine. Um, let's see, what else can we do? Do we have some MIDI to play? Let's see, media player, open, we probably do, mid, we have Canyon, okay, let's play that. Don't we all know this one, right? Anyway, so that's that working. Of course, my this is my favorite version of paint ever made. Paintbrush for Windows 3.11. Yep, there we go. It's definitely working fine. I just have to sort out a little uh, disk driver error, but uh, I'm not quite sure where that's coming from, but uh, that shouldn't be too hard of a fix. Everything else seems fine. I mean, it's pretty zippy overall. It works fine for what it is. Um, let's say, let's go to the C dri or the D drive. Fire up. Now, let's see here, what else have we got? Let's go into Doom 2. Make sure everything is set up right. 2513. Okay. Let's put music card on Wave Blaster at 330 and see how that goes. It uh, usually gives us some better sound than just the onboard FM synthesis. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. This is a bit of a heavy game for a computer like this, but. We'll see what happens. Well, it's definitely not liking that setting, that's for sure. This is the type of stuff that you have to deal with with old computers like this. They can just go up and hang on you if you set it up wrong. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to re reset that up just using these onboard Sound Blaster uh, MIDI synthesis and see how that runs. I'm sure that in DOS mode it would run just fine. This is running it from Windows, which is always a bit finicky. But... You know, I'm just going to do that in my spare time. I just uh, hope you enjoyed coming along for the ride for uh, setting up uh, DOS 6.2 and uh, Windows 3.11 for workgroups with some uh, original compact software on there to make it actually look like it was is sort of OEM software on here. Um, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.